Hello everyone, it's That's Beautiful Hazza from Tumblr. I've been getting a lot of requests um, for a tutorial on how I do my punk edits of One Direction, and so that is what I'm doing now. I got a request for a Louis and Glasses punk edit, so I picked this picture. But basically you can use any picture at all. Um, I went on to Google and I saved a bunch of images from a search for tattoo sleeve or sleeve tattoos, and a bunch of these templates come up. Come up. So I saved a bunch of them, like a bunch. Um, I tend to like the black and white ones because they look more realistic in my opinion. Okay, so using a quick selection tool on Photoshop CS6, um, select the arm that you want. I'm using this one because it is a nice bicep, like a Lua. And then you do Control J to make a new layer with solely this arm. See, right there. Um, then you're going to go in and drag this layer onto the Louis picture. Um, eh. And so there, it dropped the arm right over his face. Quite lovely, if you think about it. Um, so then you're going to go to your movement, and you're going to match up as much of this arm as possible. Because his forearm is the most exposed, I'm going to match that up with. I'm going to line up this image with his forearm, for the most part. Um, take a little bit of manipulation, of course. Um, as you can see, it's a lot bigger than his actual forearm. That is good. We intend to do this. Um, okay, so it's basically covering his entire forearm. Good. That is how we want it. And now we're going to do a thing called Puppet Warp, which is, if you've used Photoshop, you know it's a really messy way of moving limbs. So you're going to pin down everything you want to stay put, which is mostly the forearm that we've put in place. Um, and then you take the rest of this arm, and you drag it. Now I guarantee this is going to look demented and messy in so many levels, but just to get the bend of the arm. So this is bendy armed Louis. It looks so funny. Okay, but now what you do is you go into the opacity, turn it down to like 15 or 20 percent. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go in with your eraser tool and erase absolutely everything that's not touching skin. Because this is such an intricately detailed sleeve, you're not going to notice if some of the um, patterns are a little bit bent in a way that's not natural, because it's just going to look like they intended it to be that way. Like this little, I don't even know what's going on there. But you're going to erase absolutely everything that's not skin. So that includes like these fangirls' faces, I mean they're skin, but not Louis skin. Fangirls' faces, anything that looks like it has part of the tattoo template covering it. And since I don't like having him have tattoos up on his hand, just erase down to wherever you want the sleeve to begin. Um, as you think you have it all, turn up the opacity a little bit. It helps highlight some of the things you may have missed. Woo! Racing his whole arm, aren't I? Some of these little shadowy bits where they kind of blend it in. Background. Crank it up a little more. And we're pretty well done. So I usually have the opacity on the sleeves at a, around 55%. That is fine. Around 55%. Because I feel like that takes in enough of his skin tone into consideration while also. It just it just looks like it looks okay. Whoops. Um, an option you have for some of these black and white sleeves is um, setting them to overlay. And what I found that does is if you have a nice like shadow or something like he's not in good lighting, you can set it to overlay and it'll take into account that shadow. Um, what I like to do also is if they have like a line. Obviously, this is the crease of his arm. I like to just kind of smudge along it so it looks like the tattoo goes into that crease. I'm also going to smudge this because it looks, um, because of the bending, it looked very pixelated. So just kind of smudge along the line so it essentially looks like the tattoo, they accounted for the crease when they put it on. Um, that is about it for the tattoo. I don't see anything that needs to be desperately changed. If the skin tone is entirely off, you can make another quick selection of the arm, go to select, color range, and hit skin tones, and so then it'll just select the skin tones of your selection, 
and then adjust the hue, saturation, brightness, or levels as you desire. However, I think this arm is pretty close to his actual skin tone, so we're going to leave it. Um, I'd go in and do the other arm, but I'm going to continue along. So I make a new layer, and I'm going to add snake bites. Um, a lot of the snake bites that are options, you can like go on and Google them, of course, and then just cut and paste. However, I find a lot of the time, I like to just make my own, because sometimes the ones that they offer just end up looking really weird and pixelated. So I just kind of make a nice little dark gray dot on either side of his face, and then go in with the white, make it a little smaller, and just, that is essentially, oops, that was a little too big. Um, and just go in and make a little lighter gray. So if you zoom out to 100%, you honestly can't tell that those aren't real snake bites. Um, I usually set the opacity to around 85 just to give it a little more realism. You can also go into effects and add a drop shadow if you really wanted it to look real. Um, this is... Oops, you don't want this way. This is like... It just makes it look real, like it makes it look like they're popped out a bit. You can't really tell, it's not a huge difference, but see there's a little shadow underneath. And then, kind of the same for um, the earring. I just kind of go in, make a new layer, go in with a black, and make a mark on his ear. Oops, I don't want drop shadow on this. In fact, I'm not even a fan of the drop shadow effect, if you're going to ask me. It just kind of makes it look weird. Um, so you're going to make a new layer for this. Good drop shadow. Make a new layer. Go in with black. Paint a nice little dot on his ear. And then go in with white and make a center. And it, it just looks like a black and white punk earring. At least from what I've experienced, and then turn the opacity again down to like 85. It just makes it look more realistic, and I don't really... F so from, from 100%. Um, from there, I mean, I like to add eyeliner. It's not obviously... It's up to you, really, at this point, what you want to add and what you don't. Um, eyeliner, you just go in with a nice, small, soft brush. Outlining his eyes is hard with a mouse sometimes because, like, I don't have a tablet, which would make it easier. And these are really bad. So I apologize, Louis. Just smudging your eye. Um, I need a little bigger brush just so I don't. Okay. And then the other eye. We're just going to do a kind of half job on this. Um, then I go in and then I smudge it with the smudge tool. Again, just so it doesn't look as harsh. And this looks, um, yeah, smudged as actual eye. And then you just take that opacity. I take that one down to like 50, just so it doesn't look as bad. And then you go in and like a, make a little erasing mark if it's too much for you. Um, and then, I mean, I still have a little bit of time. Uh, I will do his other arm. It's the same way. Just line it up, erase, and go from there. But I think I'm going to add a little neck tattoo using, oops, I'm in the wrong layer, using part of his arm, or this arm. So I just go in, it's kind of, it's the same step. Control J, make a new layer, drag it on over, line it up. Line it up to his, wherever you want it, and start erasing. So I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial on how to make Punk Louie. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can message me at that'sbeautifulhaza.tumblr.com or I suppose you could comment here because I'm pretty sure this is on YouTube. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have fun editing pictures of One Direction to look like punks. Yeah, this is just going to be a nice little neck tattoo. Alright, thank you. Bye.